Hey, how's it going? Kenny here and welcome back to the Man United series. And up in today's episode, we have games away to Aston Villa and then we have Nottingham Forest at home in the FA Cup. So up first, we've got Aston Villa away uh, just two days after facing Chelsea on New Year's Eve. So a lot of tired players in the squad. Anyway, talking of Chelsea, I did actually uh, video the Newcastle and Chelsea games, which I said I'd bring you guys back for. But unfortunately, due to a mishap, uh, unfortunately for me, Foot Manager decided to uh, turn the match sounds on, so it was, uh, yeah, it was not a video I could release. Uh, I normally have my speakers on mute when I'm playing. Uh, it's never been an issue for me that the match sounds are just suddenly just turned on by themselves. But because it's the FM 22, uh, 23, sorry, uh, beta, uh, there's been some bugs, especially with what I've no the only bugs I've really noticed fully um, that's affected my gameplay is in the match screen. It's happened before that the um, it's gone from key highlights to just full match for no reason. Um, and I was just sitting there watching this full match for like five, ten minutes before I realised what on earth is going on here. This is a long highlight, and also it's um, it's changed the uh, the speed between highlights at times as well. So unfortunately for me, in this uh, in this episode I just videoed Newcastle and Chelsea, the match sounds just turned themselves on. So I did not realise because the speakers were turned off. Uh, I've now decided that I'm going to keep my speakers on fully whilst the beta is out at least to make sure this doesn't happen again and also I've made sure the match sounds has turned off so yeah you just missed this uh this episode which was actually quite um quite good actually before we get to that though let's get to the re uh, the results before that of course I had two games to play before the uh, the world cup and uh, we lost at home to Aston Villa 2-1 in the Carabao Cup third round after changing the tactic there it was the Carabao Cup though so it's not the biggest competition in the world to be knocked out of, but still, I wanted to go a bit far further in the competition. So, out the Europa League, out the Carabao Cup now as well. We 1 0 down through Coutinho. Rashford made it 1 1 late on, but then Ollie Watkins had a goal in the 90th minute. So, things went from bad to worse then. But thankfully, just before the World Cup break, we played Brentford at home and we beat them 1 0. Rashford with the goal there. And a clean sheet. Hallelujah. Uh, after the World Cup break, though, Argentina won the World Cup, by the way. They beat France in the finals. So, Lionel Messi going out with a bang there. Winning the World Cup before he retires. Happy days for him. Anyway, after coming back from the World Cup break, we played Newcastle away in that last episode, as I said. And uh, we were dominating the game. We dominating the game. Unfortunately for us, though, they had one chance and scored it through Isaac. And uh, all the shots we were having were off target. So no shots on target to talk of. Joe Linton made it 2-0. Of course, I was not very happy. I pretty much threw the towel in. But Donny van der Beek made it 2-1 in the 84th minute. Gave me some hope. And then super sub off the bench, Cristiano Ronaldo. Made it 2-2. So that was brilliant. Unfortunately, you're never going to see it. And uh, after that, we played Chelsea at home just five days later. Uh, this was a very, very dull game. You didn't miss much here in this game, to be honest with you. No one really created too many chances in the game. But they gave away a penalty in the 82nd minute. And Bruno Fernandes converted it. And uh, we got a 1-0 win there. So it was actually quite a decent result in the last two games. Four points. Away to Newcastle, 2-2. It's in eighth in the league currently. And at home to Chelsea, 1-0. So that was great. Unfortunately, though, uh, as I said, a mishap in the video there. So I had to come back for this one. Away to Aston Villa, our home to Nottingham Forest. Obviously, it's not as much of a blockbuster as Newcastle and Chelsea. But it's very interesting for myself, to be honest. Because we played these two already this season. We haven't won any of them. We played Nottingham Forest away in the league. Drew 1-1. We played Aston Villa at home in the Carabao Cup third round. And lost 2-1. So... Be nice to win both these games. Of course, Nottingham Forest game. We have to win the Nottingham Forest game. Otherwise, out of the FA Cup, which would be absolutely pathetic as well. Can't be out of the FA Cup as well. Out of the Europa League, out of the Carabao Cup. Cannot get knocked out of the FA Cup as well. No chance. And the home to Forest, got to be winning that game. Away to Villa first, though, as I said, two days since the last game. So, got a lot of tired players here. But I still think we can win the game. The team I'm putting out should be able to win the game. But anyway, the January transfer window has just started. Already missed out on a player to Man City, unfortunately. That was Max Ahrens from Norwich, of course. Um... Made an offer of 41 million for him, plus 3 million if he won the Europa Conference League, so 44 million effectively. Unfortunately for us, though, Man City made a bid for him as well. It was a straight shootout between the two of us, and he just chose Man City, unfortunately. I'm trying to sign a right back, of course, uh, has to make sense going for Max Aaron's, and also a centre back as well. So, in terms of the players I'm trying to sign, first of all, obviously no players have joined us as of yet. Max Aaron's would have been the first signing. Uh, I just made a bid, though, for Maxence Lacroix from uh, Wolfsburg. For 34.5 million, which is minimum fee release clause. Unfortunately, though, uh, surprise, surprise, Newcastle, PSG, and Bayern Munich can match that as well. So I just went in there, hopefully. Um, I highly doubt we're going to get him, though. You know, it's just not a, as an attractive outfit as it used to be, Man United. Let's be honest. You know, PSG and Bayern Munich in there, first of all. Um, yeah, I don't think we're going to get Lacroix. We're not going to get Lacroix anyway. We're not going to get him, but I've made a bid for him nonetheless, so we'll see what happens. Um, if I can't get Lacroix, 
problem is, because it's mid-season, a lot of these players are so expensive. So expensive. In terms of centre-backs, the two players I'm leaning more towards now on my shortlist here, because of the price effective, and also because they're good players, of course, is Milenkovic from Fiorentina. He's a very, very good player. 44 to 55 million should be able to get him for. So, obviously, it's expensive, but some of the other prices I've seen here is just absolute madness. 90 million. Uh, Kalalulu from AC Milan. I wanted to sign him. They won't accept anything less than 90 million for him. Some of the other prices, some of the other players are just absolutely crazy. So, Milenkovic is one. And also, another one I might try and sign uh, is Mary. Demera Demoral from Atlanta, trying to get in for a little bit cheap as well. So those two are certainly options centre back. But obviously, of course, here I've put a lot of players on my shortlist here. Certainly a lot of options for me to look at. I've already looked at. Um, I, it's very hard for me to decide which one to sign. Arthur Feet, I did decide on him, but then they uh, revealed their asking price is absolutely ridiculous. It's not forty-two to fifty-four million now. It's uh, seventy to eighty million. So yeah, crazy prices. And I say Kalalulu's crazy price as well. They want ridiculous extortionate money for him. They all extortionate money for him. So I'm thinking that maybe because they keep saying they're not willing to sell players mid-season that these ones are going to cost loads uh, such as a bit of the young younger players you know might develop more like Arthur Feet he's a very good player of course 22 looks very good I do want him at some point hopefully Kalalulu as well 22 uh, Vardy always 20 Badi Ashili as well 21 all these sort of players Simakan as well is a very good player 22 um, in the summer I might be able to get him for a lot cheaper it might be a little more realistic but these these sort of guys I'm not going for them right now another one is an option for me is one Foyf uh, as a right back, but the great thing about him as well is he can play centre back as well and £36 million pound million fee release clause. I already made a bid for him, but unfortunately I walked away from the contract negotiations. I uh, cancelled it like an idiot, and uh, when you do that, they don't want to join you after that. So I'm going to have to wait to the end of the. Um End of the transfer window to go for him again. But the, he's my biggest option at right back. Of course, I'd like to sign a better right back going forward. A, a world-class right back. But for now, I think one fourth would do really well. wan has left us. I'll get to him in a second. Dallow's nowhere near good enough. Williams is nowhere near good enough as well. one fourth, uh, he's much better than those uh, as a right back. So I'd like to sign him, that is for sure. 36 million. Hopefully, we might be able to uh, get him for the window. Hopefully, he might want to join us at that point. And as I said, Demoral, on the option, uh, one of the options as well as centre-back. And also Milenkovic, you know, players that are affordable in this window because we really need to strengthen a right back and centre back. Really, really do. Lacroix made a bid for him, but it's unlikely we'll get him. Anyway, in terms of the players that have already left us, well, a couple of players have left us already. Tom Heaton has joined Al Sad for 500k. That was great. He's on 65k a week, pretty much just 65k, uh, 65k um, for nothing, basically, because Tom Heaton's third choice goalkeeper. We've got, no, we've got no use for him whatsoever. He's about to turn 37 into the season. He's not very good these days. Uh, 500k, 65k wage budget uh, extra as well. So happy days. He's gone. Also, Alejandro Gonacho has gone on loan to Applewell in Cyprus for the season. He's 18 years of age. Probably will never be uh, good enough to play for us in the series here. We shall see, unless he develops nicely. But uh, pretty much just put him out in the uh, in the shop window, to be honest. He's got some decent value about him. So maybe someone can make a bid for him next season or the season after. We shall see. But yeah, I don't think he's any good enough to play for the club. I'm not saying he might not be a good player in the future, because he might be. But for Man United, probably not. So he's on loan to Applewell for the season. Also, Palistri has joined Newcastle for $7.5 million. Well, this donut said that. He, he called a meeting for me. He said that he wants to join a bigger club. Yes. he wants. He's, he's in the under-21s. And he wants to join a bigger club than Manchester United. That's not the most ridiculous reason. Because he wants to have more of a chance of playing for Uruguay in the World Cup. Okay. Well, first of all, the uh, the World Cup was pretty much over with. As it was the latter stages of the uh, World Cup. And who does he think he's going to join being the Man United? I have no idea. And be a regular starter to play for Uruguay in the World Cup. I don't know what's up with this bloke. But, yeah, he's uh, he's not on a ticket, clearly. He's joined Newcastle with 7.5 million. He's clearly not going to be a regular starter for them. He's already a breakthrough prospect, so... Yeah, happy days to get rid of him. He's on 25k a week, 7.5 million. Never going to be good enough for the club. See you later, Palistri. And also, Aaron wan has gone back home to Crystal Palace on loan to the end of the season. Uh, they're paying half his wages. And also, if they fail to get relegated... Uh, where is it? It's not probably... Here it is. They avoid relegation from the Premier Division this season. They'll pay 9.25 million to make that permanent. How is he signing for, Man United? 45 million, so it's a, it's a big old loss on wan but he's, he's clearly nowhere near good enough for Man United. I think that's been made clear in real life and uh, in foot manager terms. So he'll be leaving, end of the season, if, as long as Chris Spanish don't get relegated. Even if they don't, I'm obviously looking to sell him on a permanent transfer anyway. So that is the uh, players who have left us so far. Of course, as I said, no one has joined us yet, but we're definitely, well, I'm definitely going to sign one player. That is 100% sure. There's money here. I don't know who, I don't know who yet, to be honest, but... Will be uh, those players I mentioned probably you know one of either Foy, Lacroix, uh, Pedro Porro as well maybe. Uh, 
wish he was, better, he was a better defender. Um, but he can still defend a little bit. So might sign him as a right back as well. We shall see. Uh, Demoral, um, etc. So definitely getting one of them. But I really, really want to sign a right back and a centre back. So hopefully that will happen in this window. I'm sure it will, to be honest. And also in terms of other players, well, Twan Sabi is leaving us as well. He's going to Palmeiras, which is a strange one, for seven and a half million on the 11th of January. It's all being confirmed. Just waiting for him to join there. So he's leaving as well. We'll see fifth choice centre back here. Other than that, there's no other transfer news to talk of, other than the fact that we missed out on Max Aaron's to Man City, unfortunately. Uh, in terms of the league table, uh, after beating after those four points in those last two games, there, we're sitting in third in the league, which is nice. Um, hasn't been a great great season by any means at all, but still sitting in third in the league. We're five points clear of Arsenal in fifth, so nestling nicely in there at the moment. Uh, two points behind Liverpool. Man City are just racing away with the league title, so that is definitely out of the question. Uh, also, you might have noticed that I've got the logo pack, also the face pack and the kit pack as well, uh, but for some reason, we haven't got a logo anymore. Of course, Man United have got a problem with getting their logo in the, uh, in the game anyway, but uh, now, after getting the logo pack, the, um, the fake logo has been deleted, so it looks a little bit funny, but we will move on. Anyway, let's get to this first game then. Away to Aston Villa. We lost at home to Aston Villa in the Carabao Cup 2-1, which was absolutely shocking. But this is obviously much more important. And this is the team for today's game. We've got De Gea in goal, Williams right back, Martinez left back, Maguire and Lindelof centre backs. And we've got Matomane, Fred and Eriks in the midfield. Fernandez on the right wing, Alanga on the left wing and Martial up front. Uh, so as I said, only two days since the Chelsea game, so obviously rotated the team quite a lot. In terms of players missing, well, Luke Shaw picked up an injury, unfortunately. He's out for five to ten days with a damaged foot. Casemiro is suspended again. This bloke, though, he's, he's not very good at all. You know what I mean? Five-year contract. He's on 300k a week. How hard it will be to get rid of him as well. So there's no point even transfer listing him. Uh, he is, he's, he's a joke. Obviously, he's great in real life. He's a, a proven winner, as they say. Well, he, he's won a lot of Champions Leagues around Madrid, hasn't he? Um, but yeah, here in this series, to me, he's been terrible. He's been absolutely terrible. 6.68 average rating in the league. He's been suspended twice for too many yellow cards. He's got 10 yellow cards already this season. And he's also been red carded against Liverpool. Where he missed three games. so And cost us a game there, effectively. I think he's had off six minutes. So he has not been very impressive so far. I don't really like him. So he keeps missing games. Uh, he doesn't play very well when he does play. And uh, he's a bit of a donkey. So yeah. Not very happy of him. Anthony as well. He's suspended for today's game after picking up too many yellow cards. Uh, Rashford's been injured, unfortunately. He's missed the uh, last two games uh, since the World Cup. Be back very soon, though. Be back in three days. He'll be on the bench, at least, for Nottingham Forest, which is great. Uh, obviously, Dallow, Van der Beek, Varane, Sancho. All unfit for this game. So, Aston Villa away from home. Can we get revenge against them? Well, let's find out. Okay, here we go. Just a couple minutes into the game here. We've got a free kick chance of Ericsson. He almost scored. Well, I've made sure the match sounds are turned off this time around. I'm told, as I said, I'm going to keep the speakers on to make sure I don't hear the uh, match sounds again. Because uh, obviously, if you had the speakers off, you don't hear the match sounds. And then it's a bit of a uh, boo boo, isn't it? And uh, let me just check the settings before every single game now. Because as I said, uh, with the beta here, uh, it's basically changing things whenever it wants to. So I need to keep an eye on that. Hopefully, that doesn't happen again. But anyway, we missed the Chelsea Newcastle games. And we're here for Aston Villa. And Nottingham Forest. And here's Martinez playing left back today because Malassia is absolutely atrocious. Absolutely atrocious. Martinez has been atrocious as well, but I haven't played him at left back yet, so we'll give him a chance there, see what he does. Anyway, here's Fred. Doesn't play too many games to Alanga. Ooh. Chambers on the yellow card there. I was thinking maybe he might get sent off, but he hasn't been. Anyway, here's Bednarek. I do say it's been two days since he played Chelsea, but of course that means it's been two days since Aston have played their game as well, so. It's the same for both uh, both teams here, so we shouldn't moan too much. They look like they're playing almost like their strongest eleven, though, judging by the players on the pitch here. So maybe they're all tired, which gives us a slight advantage for sure. Anyway, here's Harry Maguire. Had a pathetic game against Newcastle with a 6.1. Pass it to Williams. Here's Fernandez. Here's Ericsson. Looking for Martial. He gets in. Oh, get in. What a goal for Martial. Lobs Martinez there. Get in. Lovely start to the match. 20 minutes in. Martial with the goal. Uh, please remember, guys, if you like this video, hit that like button for me. And also hit that subscribe button as well. It really helped me out. And he much appreciated as well. Lovely assist from Ericsson as well there. Saw the run from Martial. Thought he overdid it, but Martinez came flying out. Martial, lovely little chip there. Well, things are looking a lot more rosy for us after the uh, the World Cup. Of course, can't get carried away. It's 1-0 in this game and 60 minutes to go yet. And Bednarek with a chance there. So, can't get carried away, but we've grinded out the results. 2-0 down away to Newcastle. Came out to draw 2-2. Against Chelsea at home, both teams are poor, but we won the game 1-0 as well. So we're grinding out results right now, which is great. Well, hold on. Here's Martial again. Heavy touch, though. Mings clears it. Only to Bailey as well. Just gets through him like absolute ease there. Gets through them like absolute ease. That is pathetic. 
Also, I did mention that um, I was scrapping the Gigan Press. I did scrap the Gigan Press, gone with a control possession style. Made a couple of tweaks to the control possession style, though. Uh, a little bit more positive, I guess you could say. Uh, but still staying quite reserved, uh, especially with the defence. But it didn't seem to help in this game here, as Bailey fed through Watkins. And, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what the hair is doing. He's just leaning down like that. Just, yep, yeah, I'll just lean down. Like, that's a good way to try and stop a shot, the hair, isn't it? Brilliant stuff from you, mate. But, yeah, that's... I genuinely think it might start, it might sound quite simple, but I genuinely just think we need better players in the defence. Um, of course, you can always make better tactics and stuff like that, but I genuinely think we just need better players in the defence. And uh, it started off quite well for us, but it ended quite terribly. We didn't have a single shot in the game after scoring that goal. And Aston Villa ended this, uh, the first half stronger there than us, and uh, it's been quite pathetic, actually. We are still nowhere near good enough, that is for sure. It seems like Martinez is just a useless player because he can't play left-back either. Which is uh, yeah, a little bit... Not we haven't had a shot in the game. What is, what is happening? When was the last time we had a shot? Are you going to shoot anyone? Any danger of a shot, boys? Maybe? Maybe get it forward so we can have a shot. That'd be nice. McTominay. Maguire. Lindelof is on the transfer list as well. Trying to raise some more funds. Hopefully we can sell him. Here's Fred. Are we going to get a shot here in this highlight? Here's Williams. No. Brandon Williams gives it away. Dallo as well, looking to try and sell him as well, hopefully. Ball's kicked forward. Maguire wins the header, though. Ericsson loses out. Still nowhere near good enough, though. Here's Chambers to Buendia. Oh, okay. He's not playing. I don't know what he's doing. Alango, he's just going for a little run. Watkins, this is 2 1. Hits De Gea in the head. So somehow he kept it out. I do, uh, I do worry about these players though. It doesn't look like that they actually play football. It looks like they're absolutely terrible, to be honest with you. It's, this has been a terrible, terrible, terrible performance from us. Absolutely awful. Um, Bruno Fernandez is shattered and he's not playing too well. Let's bring on Sancho is half fit. So we can't really bring him on, can we? Oh, Fernandez stays on the pitch. No, he's anxious. Let's get him off. Let's get him off. You know what? I'm bringing on Sancho. He'll be all right. He's not injured, is he? Put one on the left. alanga has been awful as well. Um, you know what? Bring on Ronaldo. Ronaldo, the forgotten man. He's on the pitch. Put Martial on the right. Uh, also, Fred's been useless as well. We'll take Fred off and we'll bring on Van der Beek. Van der Beek's been quite good this season. I've been quite happy with Van der Beek. He looks like quite a good player for me. Yeah, since we scored that goal, it's... Being atrocious. We're not creating anything at all. Nothing. We are not creating anything. It's so bad. Brilliant Malassia as well, but this is so, so bad. Are they going to do anything in the game? We're literally not creating nothing. That's the problem. With the Gigan press, we're just so leaky at the back, it was pathetic. But now I've changed to this, uh, this style. Uh, it seems to sort the defence out a little bit. Anyway, Ronaldo's through. It sorted out the defence a little bit because um, we still can see the two goals against Newcastle. We can see the goal here as well. Uh, but we're not creating any chances. We're not scoring any chances. We're not creating anything. Had two shots on target in the match. It's this. Oh. Hold on. That Malassia, though, I, oh, I can't stand him. I can't stand him. He's so, he's so bad. Malassia, he is, he is so bad. He's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. Brandon Williams was 6.8 right there. That's nothing to shout about at all, but that's already so much better than Molassi can put in. So much better than Molassi can put in. He's so bad. Anyway, minutes to go here. Ronaldo! He scored in the last minute to get the equaliser against Newcastle there. He always scored again. Martinez with the ball here, though. This will be a, a poor draw, it has to be said. But not like we deserve to get a draw out of the game. We've been poor in the game again. And still, the... the the team is not clicking, and but maybe I shouldn't moan too much because we're four matches unbeaten now. If we fa if we fail to uh, concede late here, then we're four matches unbeaten, two wins, two draws. But still, it's not good enough. Wait, to Aston Villa, come on, we've got to be winning these sort of games. Especially after going one nil up as well. He's probably a mile offside. That's why he didn't go go for the ball there. It's Tyro Mings to the camber. He passes back to Martinez. Now it's Mings. Kicks it forward. Here's Watkins. I'm going to see late here. I asked him to beat us for a second time in the season. 
it was offside anyway, but yeah, well, we're creating more chances here towards the end. Looked a little bit better. Uh, draw is probably a fair result in the end. Yeah, we did get a lot better towards the end there, so shouldn't be too harsh. It's not the worst result in the world away to ask for the 1-1, especially two days after playing Chelsea, I guess, but still, it's, it's, it's still not good enough, though, is it? It's still not good enough, but as I said, we shouldn't. I shouldn't be too harsh because it is four matches unbeaten. It's, it's baby steps after all. It's baby steps, and we are still sitting pretty in the top four, I guess, so shouldn't complain too much. Uh, we're, well, we're six points clear of Arsenal now because they lost 3-2 to Man City day, today, so... Yeah, we are sitting pretty in the top four, and it looks extremely likely. Well, I say extremely likely. There's still 19 games to go yet, but it does look likely it'll be us, Liverpool, and Tottenham in the top four, unless uh, one of our starts got a bad run of form. So it's still in a good situation, but I'm just not happy with the performances. But saying that, if we get some better players in, maybe things will look a lot more rosy. Hopefully it will. Anyway, guys, make sure you stick around. Not in Forest up next, at home in the FA Cup. Let's hope we don't get knocked out of this competition as well. Okay, here we go. It's time for the FA Cup third round against Nottingham Forest. I'm not taking any risks with today's game. I'm going my strongest 11 because I cannot be afford to be knocked out of any more competitions. You've got to be out of the Open League, out of the Carabao Cup. Can't be out of the FA Cup here as well, that is for sure. Anyway, a bit of transfer news to talk of. And that is I've made a bid for a centre-back. His name's Joseph Sutalu. Some of you are probably familiar with him. Plays for Dino Zagreb. And uh, he's got a lot of teams after him. I've never actually heard of him before I uh, saw him on this FM. And um, I know I was talking about signing uh, Demiral or, um, or Milenkovic. But Sutalu, I had another look at him. And um, he doesn't look that great physically. But defensively, he's really good. And also, he's only 22 still, so he's probably going to get a little bit better. So, yeah, he's a really good centre-back. Um, I'd like to see him join us. He's, you can compare him with someone like Lindelof, just for example. Uh, see here, he's, he's a lot better than Lindelof, and he's six years younger. So, be a nice replacement for Lindelof, that is for sure. And also, made a bit of only 30 million for him, which is great. So, fairly cheap. Well, very cheap, actually. Uh, he has got a lot of teams after him, though, as I said. He's got Liverpool, Newcastle, Tottenham, PSG, Bayern Munich, Juventus, and Real Madrid after him. So, Definitely uh, some competition there. We're the first team to go in for him, though. Obviously, I'm still in for Lacroix as well. Um, get both. I'll get both, to be fair, for that sort of price. That'd be great. I'm trying to keep it... Um, some of the cheaper guys I'll try and sign, to be honest. You know, they're sim rather similar sort of level. Then I'll try and sign the ones who are a lot cheaper, of course. I'm not going to break the bank to bring in uh, just some of these players who are not world-class, let's be honest. So, trying to be... Uh, not get my pants pulled down, put it that way. So, yeah, Sotalo made a bid for him. Also, someone I tried to sell, did I not? Vitek, that was it. Vitek, he's a goalkeeper. And uh, he's joining Victoria Ziskov on the 26th of January. Whoever the hell that is. Anyway, let's get to this game then. Nottingham Forest at home in the FA Cup. As I said, we're out of the Europa League. We're out of the Carabao Cup. Can I be knocked out of the FA Cup as well? And in terms of the team sheet, a few changes from the Aston Villa game there. Dallow comes back in at right back in place of Williams. Uh, Martinez remains left back. Uh, also, Varane comes in for Maguire. Casemiro is back in the team for McTominay. Van de Beek comes in for Fred. Uh, Fernandez moves back to his attacking field position. That effectively means Anthony comes in for Ericsson. Uh, Sancho comes back in the team for Alanga, wasn't it? And Rashford's back up front in place of Martial. So... Martinez made the left back today's game. He wasn't great there, left back, but uh, Malassia, he's, he's completely out of my plans. I'm telling you, I, I, I can't stand him. He's terrible. Also, Dubravka is the FA Cup. He's not getting a chance, though. I gave him enough chances in the uh, in the Europa League. 6.62 from five games there. He's not getting another game here for me unless De Gea gets injured. So, he is absolutely terrible. He's not giving a chance here today either. Luke Shaw is still injured, unfortunately. Other than that, though, we're not missing anyone. Ericsson, he's been quite good recently. So, um, maybe I might... Regret not starting him today, but we shall see. He's on, he's on the bench nonetheless. Hopefully, he can make a difference. But anyway, not only Forest at home. Got to get through this one. Will we do it? Let's find out. All right, here we go. Home to Forest. Got to win this game, as I said. Got to win this game. Home to Forest. Got to be winning comfortably. It's the FA Cup, but still got to be winning this game comfortably. And this is what, well, obviously, the Europa Commons League is our biggest chance of winning the trophy now, of course. Well, we got to win that trophy, surely. Got to get at least to the final. I don't know what other teams are in it, but... Got to fancy our chances there. But other than that, the FA Cup is our biggest other competition, uh, realistic competition to win, isn't it, really? Well, we can't win the Carabao Cup. We can't win the Europa League. It's either the league or the FA Cup. And obviously, we're not going to win the league. Man City are going to win the league. So, got to go far in the FA Cup. And in these sort of games, got to be winning them. Sancho's put us one up already, which is a great start to the match. Four minutes in. It was a great strike from Sancho, actually. Fernandez finds it. I don't know what they're looking at, to be honest with you. I don't know what they're looking at there. I have no idea. But yeah, Sancho puts us 1-0 up. That's a great start to this FA Cup tie here. It'd be nice if we could have, you know, a very nice win here as well. You know, get the confidence up a little bit. We have grinded out some results in the recent times. I said four matches unbeaten. 
Three matches unbeaten since the uh, since the World Cup break there, but nothing sensational to talk of. Just a 1-0 win against Chelsea in uh, two games ago. So it'd be nice to get a little bit of a statement win, but saying that, we scored the goal, and now we're all completely quiet again, which is brilliant. Anyway, Martinez here has actually had a decent game. What is happening? Is he feeling all right? Is he okay? Is Van der Beek, who crosses it in. Anthony. Oh, he's gone for a goal kick. I don't know where the linesman's going, by the way. <laughs> Where's he off to? Well, we've been by far the better team in this first half here, but it's only 1-0, so it'd be nice to get a second goal in the game. The team's playing quite well, though. It's actually quite a decent performance for a change. Rashford is not playing well up front, though, but he has just come back from injury, so we cannot be too harsh on the boy. That is for sure. But that's a very good first half. Very good first half. I'm actually quite happy for a change, but it's only 1-0 against Nottingham Forest, so cannot get carried away, that is for sure. I cannot get too excited, um, but it is a good performance. Brennan Johnson, he scored against us in the, uh, in the league match we played against them, so... Got to watch him. Anyway, here's Dallow. Can we get a second goal here and start to relax early on in the second half? Here's Bruno Fernandes. Pass it to Rashford. Nice play there, Rashford, but pass the ball. That's it, yeah. Casemiro. Been a very, very poor player this season. Very, very poor. Here's Dallow. For 300k a week, he's 1 out of 10. 1 out of 10. He was a lot, lot less money than that, and he would be as bad. But for 300k a week, he's 1 out of 10. Anyway, he's bad. Sancho for his second goal of the game. Lo oh, I was about to say lovely finish, but the net didn't bulge. I was sure that was in then. Oh, my word. A uh, bit of news about um, Malassia. Um, I'm thinking about loaning him out, to be honest, because he's been that terrible for us. And Martinez, I know it's only one game. Um, I think it's safe to say that he can play left back. And obviously, we've got Luke Shaw and um, Martinez. And, of course, uh, we've got Williams who can play left-back as well. So, I'm think I don't know if Malassi will uh, be happy about it, though, because obviously he's a new signing. So, I'll have to see after this game. But I'm thinking about trying to load Malassi out, give him some game time. Because as it comes to stage when you look at some players and they're just literally unusable for you. And Malassi, at the moment, at the last 15 games or so I've played him, he, he looks unusable. He's that poor. So, I might try and load him out, to be honest. Um, anyway, Rashford's not had a great game today. I think we'll take him off. Uh, let's bring on Ronaldo. It's only 1-0 this game, though, still. Playing really well, but it's only 1-0. Also, Anthony is not in a good run of form currently. He's not in a good run of form at all. So, bring on Ericsson for him. Put Ericsson in the middle. Put Fernandes on the right. Uh, talking of Malassia, though. As you know, no, nah, not talking of Malassia. I'll give, I'll give them enough chance. I don't want to give them any more chances. No more chances for you, Malassia. No more chances. Alanga can come on as well. Um, actually, no, Alanga can't come on. Brandon Williams can come on for Martinez. There you go. Three changes. I made those three substitutions. I hope you can make five substitutions in the FA Cup. I just assumed you could. So maybe that's a, a, if we get a player injured at this point, and we cannot make more than three substitutions, then that is a massive error for myself here. Anyway, it's Casemiro to Dallo. Perfect chance to get a second goal, boys. Let's not do anything stupid here. Here's Varane. Out to Williams. As I said, it's only not in for us at home, so let's not get carried away, but... This season has not been too many great performances to talk of. Ronaldo, no. He's Bruno Fernandes, though. Lovely cross into the box, but Hennessy gathers it very easily there. Was he one of the 28 signings not in Forest Made so That's just ridiculous, isn't it? That is ridiculous. Who in their right mind would say that? How can you sign over 20 players? So, say that though, they, if they stay up in the league, then they've done the right thing, haven't they? But at the moment, it just looks absolutely ridiculous. They just beat Liverpool, though, to be fair. 1 0, so fair play to them. But over 20 signings is madness. Anyway, here's Dallo. Out to Bruno Fernandes. Crosses in. Ronaldo to make it 2 0. He does make it 2 0, but he might be offside. The Portuguese compatriots combining there. I think if he's not behind the ball, then he's offside. It's a goal. Gets in. Finally get that second goal. It's Ronaldo with the goal. He'll be leaving us end of the season, of course. But I, do, I, do, I never start Ronaldo. Not in league or cup games or anything like that. But I do bring him off the bench sometimes. So um, he still does get used a little bit. But pretty much like Ted Hag using him in real life. Just forget about the tunnel incident. It'll be, that's how he'll be used the rest of the season. But obviously now he might not be used for the rest of the season. Because uh, his main like, career is over, probably. The way he behaves. Anyway, Dallo kicks it long. Here's McKenna. Obviously it's 2-0, but still not game over yet. A third goal should wrap it up nicely, though. But it's still a very good performance. Whether against who it is or not, London Forest is still a very good performance. And uh, I'm quite happy to see something good for a change. But as I said, we cannot get carried away playing a team like London Forest and beating, beating them 2-0. Anyway, it's Brandon Williams. Nice ball to Sancho. He's had a good game today. 
Tries to find Ronaldo, but Frudo's there to, uh, to uh, intercept. Anyway, here's Dallo to Bruno Fernandes. Ericsson, he shoots. Ooh, lovely little shot. Dallo as well might try and look to sell him uh, to fund one of the uh, new right backs coming in, but we'll see what happens. See what happens. I think we've got enough money to bring a couple of players in already, so we'll see who else I can sell, to be honest. Anyway, can I make another substitution? Do I give Malassia a go? We can. Malassia, you've got 20 minutes. Let's see what you can do in 20 minutes. Can you do anything? Probably not. And also, let's bring on let's bring on the Langer as well. Bring him on for Bruno Fernandes. Let's see what he can do. 20 minutes to go. It's been absolutely walking the park in today's match. As it should be. But still, as I said, it's nice to see after so many poor performances. Still can't get a third goal, though. Might do now, though. With a free kick opportunity. Ericsson with a chance here. Should be going in the back of the net. They always do. Ericsson. That must be the rare one out of 10 that's not gone in. Anyway, less than 10 minutes to go here. Well, he's not going to score from there, that's for sure. He's going to cross it in, though. Ronaldo gets his head to the ball, but it's just wide. Very comfortable win, though. This is what we need. Well, I say very comfortable. It's still seven minutes to go yet, so I shouldn't celebrate early. Especially with us. Especially with our defence. You never know what's going to happen. But it doesn't look likely, does it? Here's Ronaldo to Alanga. Here's Eriksen, who shoots over the bar. Should be more than 2-0, though, let's be honest. At least we've avoided a, uh, a cup upset here, hopefully. A couple minutes to go. It looks like it's done now. Yeah, it's done now. Four minutes at a time. Good performance. Really good performance. Really good performance. That happy with that. Only 2-0 at home to Forest, but it's a clean sheet. It's a good performance. That's uh, that's what we need right now. That's what we need right now. It's now five matches without, um, without a defeat as well, which is uh, which is good. So that's nice. Getting the players' confidence up. Getting their morale up as well. That's what we want to see. That's what we want to see. And most importantly, we're not out of the FA Cup, which is great. We remain in the FA Cup. When is the FA Cup fourth round draw taking place? Fernandez with a good performance there. Two assists. He had quite a good season, Fernandez, actually. He's got quite a few assists. He's got seven goals and eight assists this season. So he's done quite, he's done quite well, Bruno, this season. Nothing sensational, but he's done quite well. Anyway, when's the FA Cup fourth round draw take place? If it takes place soon, I'd like to uh, see it in this uh, in this episode. Fourth round. Night for January. Two days' time. So yeah, make sure you stick around, guys. We'll see who we get in the FA Cup fourth round. I don't believe it. Lacroix has decided to join us over PSG, Bayern Munich, and Newcastle. I wasn't expecting that at all, so that is absolutely great. You see here, Lacroix moved delay due to work permit. So he's obviously chosen to join us. Obviously, it's delayed due to the work permit, but of course, we know he's going to get a work permit. So Lacroix will be joining us. 11th of January, we, uh, the decision we made. Uh, 34, 44 and a half million is a uh, minimum fee release clause. That is brilliant. Um... Also, I would say he's a world-class centre-back. Uh, I think he's a centre-back that we're all familiar with from FN22 and FN23 now, of course. Uh, 34 million, though, is a great price, in my opinion, for him. He's, uh, he's a solid centre-back. He's got great pace as well, which is great. Uh, and he's still only 22, so hopefully he'll improve. But to beat those big teams to him is, uh, is brilliant. And we finally get a new centre-back. Happy days. Happy days. So, first signing confirmed. Lacroix will be... Well, not officially confirmed, but pretty much confirmed. He'll be joining us in a couple of days' time. Which is absolutely brilliant. And of course, we've got him for um, Sutalu. That's it, Sutalu as well. So, as I said, I'll, I'll sign both of them, to be honest. Because Martinez, I don't see him as a centre-back for me in the series. Of course, he's a centre-back in real life. But in the series, don't see him as it. And uh, Lindelof want to get rid of him. So, then we'll be left with Sutalu if he joins. Lacroix, Varane and Maguire. And I'll be looking to sell Maguire next summer. Um, so... Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take Sotalo as well. We can get him, which is great. We can afford him, for sure, because of the uh, wage budget available. So, yeah, happy to take those two. Brilliant. That'd be very, very nice. Still need a right back as well. But anyway, let's get to the um, FA Cup fourth round draw. I won't do the automatic draw, though, because otherwise we'll be here till Christmas with this uh, this new system. I hate this system. FN23, if any of you guys are watching, you guys are on the, uh, on the team there, this draw is terrible. I absolutely hate it. Let's advance. Uh, let's advance Tottenham the first team out though who's, who's getting Tottenham Fleetwood um, how do we advance to end then advance there you go who are we getting who we got more like Reading or Swindon so yeah very happy with that should be able to get through to the uh, the fifth round very comfortably that's a good little draw for us we we want to avoid some of the bigger teams and just go on a little bit of a run and get towards the latter stage of the FA Cup. That'd be very nice. Anyway, in terms of the next episode, well, I was meant to feature Chelsea and Newcastle in that in this episode today. Obviously, I had a bit of that mishap with the match sound, so you know what? A little bit of a uh, little bit of a deja vu there. Chelsea and Newcastle are the only two games in March. 
I think I'll bring you back for the Chelsea Newcastle games. Away to Chelsea and home to Newcastle this time. So, yeah, be uh, be able to repeat the episode. Uh, will it be as good as the episode I just uh, videoed? Uh, I don't know, but hopefully it will be. But anyway, make sure you join for the next episode, guys. Chelsea away and Newcastle at home. And thank you guys for watching this video. Please remember, if you like the video, to hit that like button for me. And also hit that subscribe button, please, guys. It would really help me out. And much appreciate as well. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you for the next one.